In this module, I will be explaining about the mechanism of monsoon. The term monsoon has been derived from the Arabic word mausam meaning season. These are seasonal periodic winds that change their direction of flow with the change of season. During summer, the monsoon winds blow from sea to land. You can see that this is the southwest monsoons during summer and the direction of the wind is from sea to land. And from land to sea during the winter season. The monsoon winds are characterized by complete reversal in the direction of the prevailing winds between January and July over the Indian continents. So this direction is during the month of July, which is a summer season in Northern Hemisphere and India will be experiencing summer season and the direction of the wind will be from sea to land. And this is during the month of January. That is in India we have winter season and the direction of the wind will be from land to sea. So this is what we call it as reversal in the wind direction. Several attempts have been made to explain the mechanism of the monsoons, but there is no satisfactory explanation available till date. In 1686 AD, Halley, an Englishman proposed that the monsoons were caused by the differential heating of the land and sea, which was ruled out as the thermal concept failed to explain the intricacies of the monsoon. However, the air mass theory and the jet stream theory are becoming more relevant. Let us first understand the air mass theory. If you refer to the world pressure belt, the southeast trade winds from the southern hemisphere and the northeast trade winds from the northern hemisphere, they meet each other in the region known as ITCZ, that is Intertropical Convergence Zone. Now this is the region, we also call it as equatorial low pressure. And here, air is always ascending and there is maximum cloud formation and heavy rainfall. And this is also the place where the tropical cyclones develop. During the summer, with the apparent migration of the sun, The ITCZ shifts northwards. So we know the sun moves within the two tropics. That is the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. So as the sun moves to the north, where northern hemisphere is experiencing summer, the ITCZ along with all the pressure belts will be shifting northwards. As a result, the southeast trade winds will cross the equator and are deflected towards right due to the Coriolis forts and the winds blow into the Indian Ocean, Indian subcontinent as southwest monsoon winds. Now let us understand the summer monsoons referring to the map of India. 
So as I had told you that during summer season with the apparent migration of the sun moving north northwards so 23rd uh, 21st march the sun will be on the equator and after 21st march it will continue to move towards the tropic of cancer and the sun will be overhead tropic of cancer on 21st of june so as the sun shifts northwards the itcz also will be shifting northwards as a result the southeast trade winds from the southern hemisphere let us take this to be the southeast trade winds they will cross the equator and as they cross the equator due to coriolis force they will be deflected towards right and then they blow into india as southwest monsoon winds in winter the conditions are reversed the itcz shifts south of the equator and the northeast trade from the northern hemisphere will cross the equator and will be deflected towards northwest so if you take this to be the northeast trades so as they cross the equator they will be deflected towards left and they will blow over australia australia is here so they will blow over australia as northwest monsoons so like in india we have southwest monsoons in summer because july india will be experiencing summer since it lies in the northern hemisphere so in july australia will be experiencing winter whereas when india is experiencing winter season australia will be experiencing summer season let us take the second explanation that is the jet stream theory i have already referred in the previous module that jet streams are high level winds near tropopause and they determine the onset and the departure of the monsoons so in the figure you can see there are four permanent jet streams the one which is marked in red is called the polar jet stream and the one which is marked in green is the subtropical jet stream these are four permanent jet stream in addition to these permanent jet stream there are few temporary jet streams let us first understand what are jet streams and for understanding jet stream we have to take the pressure belts of the earth that is the world pressure belts here i have taken the cross section of the pressure belts you can see that this is the equator this is around 30 degree north latitude this is 60 degree north latitude and this is the north pole this red line marks the tropopause that is the upper limit of the troposphere remember whatever atmospheric circulation it will be restricted within the troposphere now in the formation of the pressure belts we have taken two important factors that determines the pressure the, that determines the world pressure belt that is temperature and rotation of the earth so i am not going to that explanation so let us take this this is the equatorial low pressure belt 
or we also call it the ITCZ. You can see the air is always ascending and therefore there will be an intense low pressure and this area will be marked with the heavy rainfall, intense cloud formation and tropical cyclones are also known to form here. Then you can see this 30 degree north where the air is sinking. So it is a belt of high pressure which we call it as subtropical high pressure. And these are the trade winds. This is the northeast trade winds. If we take this as the northern hemisphere and this is the southeast trade winds. So they converge here. This is the zone of convergence. And this is the zone of divergence. We have another zone of convergence that is the subpolar low pressure belt. This is around 60 degree north latitude. So where the northerlies or polar easterlies and the southwesterlies they meet. And due to the meeting of this cold and warm air the warm air is being pushed up. So therefore this belt of convergence which we call it as the polar front temperate cyclones are known to form here. And you can see the position of the jet stream. This is where the jet stream form. This is the polar jet and this is the subtropical jet. And this is the tropical easterly jet stream. So while we are referring to the climate of India, I'll be referring to this subtropical jet stream which we call it as westerly jet stream because they blow from west to east and they blow they are very uh, they are very much active in the winter and this is the tropical easterly jet stream which becomes active during the summer season. So we'll see the reason why this remains active in the winter and why this remains active in the summer. So let us take few things here which I have written it down over Indian subcontinent. So in winter we have the westerly jet this is also referred as subtropical jet stream and uh, this jet stream is whenever there will be high pressure over northwestern part of India. So as, as long as the high pressure will be there this jet stream will be blowing into India and these jet streams they bring the western disturbance that is the temperate cyclones and they blow from west to east. Then in summer we have the tropical easterly jet stream or we also call it as easterly jet. They are associated with the low pressure and they bring the tropical cyclones into India and they blow from east to west. I will be referring the influence of the jet stream with reference to the map of India. So let us take what happens in winter. Let us see what happens in winter. So in winter, the westerly jet stream, this is the westerly jet stream. It blows over northern plains. Actually, this westerly jet stream gets bifurcated into two branches. The northern which moves over Tibetan plateau and the southern branch which moves over northern India. The southern branch blows eastwards along the southern slopes of the Himalayas and they bring the western disturbance into India. And due to this western disturbance, there is very cold weather in the northern plains, particularly the northwestern part of India.
In summer, the westerly jet stream shifts to the north of the Himalayas, north of the Himalayas, and is replaced by the easterly jet stream. The formation of the easterly jet stream results in the reversal of the upper air circulation patterns. High pressure will be replaced by low pressure, particularly heating over the Tibetan plateau. That will further intensify the easterly jet stream and it results in heavy rainfall as it helps in the sudden onset of the monsoons along the Malabar coast and they also bring the tropical cyclones into India. Tropical cyclones are known to form over Andaman Sea and over South China Sea. So since this winds jet stream is blowing from east to west so they bring the tropical cyclones into India and the eastern coast will come under its influence. So that is how the jet stream plays an important role in affecting the climate of India.